Sugarcane is probably the most uh, unprecedented case of what we call low fare. It's so good to see you all here. That's really something big that happened in the past nine months that didn't happen in the previous eight years. Now we all are participants of this story, of this conflict. It changed completely because there was, yeah, there was barely any coverage of Ukraine before the full invasion. Since February, it represents about 30% of our publication. So it's a massive change and it's very rare, very rare that a story takes so much uh, space on the website. Pretty much all of them were clear that it would be part of their work to also cover potential war crimes committed by their own armed forces. So they all turn from classic court reporters, they all turn into war crimes court reporters. However many promises the international community makes and however many promises the ICC might make, the most of the 50,000 of war crimes investigations registered by now, the most of them will be within Ukraine and it's up to the Ukrainian professionals to, to work on it. We have these uh, uh, trials in different regions, not only in Kiev. Uh, now we have uh, trials in very small towns with no normal transport connection, with no service, very poor infrastructure. Uh, probably there won't be any hotel there and he would have some difficulties with transport to go there. But it's made because this is the closest court to the place where the crime was committed. The system is quickly moving to, well, not being perfect, but being significantly improved in comparison to what it used to be before the February invasion. Uh, within this nine months, there is a shift from direct perpetrator cases to low to mid-level to high-level commander's cases, from simple one in single incident investigations to more complex cases. And that's a really important change. The entire justice system is learning on the job. And so gradually we realized that the whole exchange of prisoners strategy of Ukrainian authorities actually deprived the system from having commanders. Because the commanders have value, so they were exchanged and they wouldn't be tried. And it's only the lower level uh, guys who would be tried and possibly exchanged afterwards, by the way. Through these trials, through these cases, you have a whole story of the war that is being written in court. And we know that. We know the power of court cases to actually tell the life of people in during the war. But these first trials, they might not seem impressive on the outside, and this is all under the terrible pressure of the ongoing hostilities, but also the pressure from the public on the prosecution and on the judiciary to be up to the same standard that the military is and they were desperate to do something and so of course all efforts start with these small steps and Shishimarin case is a small step. It was quite representative of the criminality that also took place or is still taking place when these soldiers commit crimes against random civilians, not just with uh, rockets and missiles, but also with the being on the ground and really pulling the trigger. These are the first cases and we are just moving to something more complex and more sophisticated. The bottom line is give the investigators and prosecutors some time and I promise you they're moving in the right direction. I think to me it's the reality of justice in times of war, it's harsh.